In this video tutorial, we're going to be covering how to build custom radio buttons with a custom design using pure CSS. Follow along. All right, now I've got here just a little bit of boilerplate code here. You can see I've got an HTML document set up. I just have a div with a class of container and then just a form tag here. And this container is just so the preview here is a little nicer over here for you to see. And what we first need to do is add three different inputs here. So we're going to add our first one. We're going to say input and the type is going to be a radio here. And the ID will just say is, I don't know, radio as well. And the name will just say is uh, um, uh, ice cream. That sounds like a good one. And we're going to make this first one checked by default. Okay. And then after the input fields, we're going to be adding a label. And this is important. The label has to come afterward. And we'll just say vanilla. This label has to have a four attribute. So four equals. And it's going to be for the ID of uh, radio. That's actually a bad ID. Let's give this one guy uh, vanilla. Let's make the ID the same there. So we can make this one for vanilla. And then just to kind of make these easier to separate, I'm just going to put each of these guys in just paragraph tags so that they'll all uh, break nicely, nicely into the lines. Then I'm going to copy this entire thing and we'll paste it a couple more times. So let's go ahead and save. You can see we've got our three input fields and that's what they're looking like. So we need to change them all. So we'll say here chocolate and chocolate oh, oops down here we'll say we need to switch this to chocolate 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 and this one will say caramel some people say caramel i like to say caramel which is by the way the best of the ice creams in case you were wondering so absolutely we need to take this checked property delete it from these two and leave caramel checked by default. So let's now make sure this is going to be working for us. So now we have the checked on the caramel. So that one will be checked by default. So of course our radio buttons look like this and this is just the browser default. So this is what they look like if I don't do anything, right? This is just Safari. I think I'm actually in Firefox here is applying these styles. So what if I want custom styles? That's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to leave this alone. This is our sort of our boilerplate code. Now let's move over to our CSS sheet and we'll be doing all of our work inside of here. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're just going to, in this example, we're not going to be using class names. We're just going to simply use the, the IDs and the input type selectors. Now there are a few browsers that have limited support for actually directly styling the radios and the checkbox and things like that elements, but the support isn't very well. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to hide the default input field completely and then just custom draw our own with CSS. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, one method is by positioning it absolutely and then just sending it clear off the screen. There's another method where we can say display none but there's a few accessibility issues with some of these. So the method I'm going to be using is just simply making the opacity of zero. So we're going to write a new selector here. So this is going to be a selector for all of the input fields that have the type. And we'll just say type, whoops, I typed this incorrectly. Type equals radio. So this will affect all radio buttons. And we're just going to say opacity zero and then save and you can see that essentially makes them all invisible however they are still there we just can't see them okay the next thing we're going to, we're going to be doing is adding back in some of our own custom radio states using the before and after pseudo elements because we've hidden the actual input fields we have to use the actual label and create a pseudo element on the label so that's the next thing we're going to do here so we'll say input radio and then we're going to be looking at the adjacent label and then with this we're going to be setting the position to relative and we're going to be setting the 
uh, padding left, we'll just set it 20 pixels for now. We'll adjust these maybe in a minute. Cursor, we're gonna be setting to a pointer. And the display will set to inline dash block. And then we'll just set a color here for now of red, just so we can kind of see this happening. Okay. So we set up the, again, this is just for all of these labels that are adjacent to a radio button that follow it. The next thing we're going to be doing is I'm going to copy this rule. We're going to be setting up the before pseudo element. So colon, colon before. And now we're going to do a little bit of work here to design this. So there is no content. So we'll leave content as blank on the pseudo element. Position is going to be absolute because we're going to absolutely position our little circles where we want them. And just so we can kind of see these guys here, let's give them a width of, I don't know, 25 pixels. I'm kind of just making these values up here. And a height of 25 pixel. And just so you can see it, I'm going to give it a background color of blue. So there is our little pseudo elements you can see all appearing inside of here. And that looks fine. And because they're actual labels, you can see they're clickable. That's the way the for attribute works on labels. Uh, so next we can go ahead and instead of a uh, background color, we're, we're going to just set up a border and make a little radius here and a few things like that. So let's say border dash radius 100%. So that's going to turn them into circles. And then let's go ahead and actually give them a border. So we'll say border. And again, this is up to you. Maybe we'll say, because we're going to be doing custom, let's kind of make this a little different. Two pixels um, dashed uh, gray. So we'll go with a maybe a DDD. That might be a little bit too light. Yeah, that's looking a hair bit light. So we'll go a little bit darker, maybe AA. Okay, let's get rid of the background color here. So there's our little outlines for our radio buttons. Again, we could just do solid if we wanted to have them be a solid outline as well. But we'll go with dash just because we're doing something a little more custom. And now we can position them. So we want them to be left zero pixels and top zero pixels. So that moves them over there a little bit. So that's pretty good there. And Let's mess around a little bit here on our labels with our line height. Line height, let's set that to, I don't know, 25 pixels or something. So I'm just trying to make this uh, text here center up a little bit more in the, and this depends on your font and whatnot. That's why I say just kind of play around with these values. So I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. So maybe let's go uh, 20, let's maybe go 18 or something like that. Let's go 18 pixels, 18 pixels. And my preview over here is way zoomed in as well, just so you're aware. So that's looking a little bit closer. Now let's mess around here with my padding left. Let's maybe set that to 30 pixels. Okay, so that's pretty close there. Again, fudge your values as you need. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and set up a new rule. So I'm going to copy this one and paste this down here. And this one's going to be for the selected or checked state. So when the input radio is checked, so colon checked, uh, this is the way they'll appear. So now we need to basically do some more stuff like this. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out how we want to do our check state. Maybe we're just going to kind of fill it in a little bit. So here maybe we will use a background color. So maybe we'll come in here and give this guy a background of white. And then in our checked state, um, maybe we want to give these guys a background of, let's just say blue for now so we can test that. So you can see it has that blue background, except I don't want it to be completely full. So we're going to change the width and the height here. So we'll say um, content again is going to be blank. We need to add that every time. And then width on our previous one, this was up at 18 and 18. So down here, I don't know, maybe we'll make this 14 and 14 or something like that. So we'll save that. Uh, 
Okay, now let's go ahead and set up our after rule. So I'm gonna basically copy this entire rule and just paste it down here, except of, instead of before, it's gonna be after, because this is going to be the little dot that's filled in. So our after rule here will have a, maybe we'll shrink these guys up a bit. So they're each gonna be maybe 14 pixels, 14 pixels, and we'll make the background so we can see them here uh, blue. And we don't want any border. Whoops. Background blue, background blue. And then we're going to shift these values here till it's centered so we can say two pixels or something. We'll just kind of fudge these until we visually get that thing centered. Looks like another pixel or two on each one. Whoops. Cancel. So four and four. There we go. So now our little dot right there is in the center. Now, instead of a background just being this solid color blue, we could also apply a gradient and sort of make it, you know, have some shape, but I'll just leave it like that for now. And that looks pretty good. So we'll maybe just give it this same AAA color here uh, to show that it's selected. So that looks pretty good. And this is only going to be now on the checked state. So let's say checked. And so when the radio is checked, this is what we're going to apply to the after state. So now you can see that I can kind of jump around between those two. I'm actually not sure why this middle one is not working. I think I probably have something wrong in my HTML. Let's double check. And I do. You can see that I spelled chocolate there and I spelled the ID wrong. So I need to save that and fix it. So let's see if these work now. Perfect. So now you can see I can click through each of these radio buttons and I get that nice little custom design. And so the last thing we're going to do is add a bit of animation. So let's come over here and what we can do is add a little bit of animation. So maybe the little bubble sort of grows or shrinks or something like that. We need to add one more rule that's similar to this guy. Um, but that is we're going to do a rule that says not checked. So we're going to say not checked. So something like that. And then we'll just add in like a scale. So I'm just going to do a transform and I'll say scale to one here. Actually, this one's going to be zero. Did I do that? Spell that right? Transform. And then we'll add this same transform on this one up here. So when it is checked, we'll scale to one. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work. So we click in there. Nope, that's not working. I did something goofy. Oh, I didn't add my, add my transform, I didn't add my transition. So we'll come in here and we will add the transition of, we'll just say all, and we'll say 0.3 seconds. Okay, then we're going to basically copy this entire rule here. And we need to do a rule when they're not checked so that we can tr animate between the checked and the not checked state. So I'll paste that in there. And I'm gonna do a little guy in here that says not, and we'll look for this checked state. So in other words, this is how the radio buttons are gonna look when they're not checked. This is how the radio buttons are going to look when they are checked and we can then change these and then animate the difference. So I've already added my transition all. I'll probably just do 0.3 seconds and set that to ease. And then in the non-checked state, everything is essentially the same, except I want my background color to be white. And I'm gonna transform from a scale of zero and opacity of one, uh, or I sorry, actually opacity, oops, I said 10. Transform scale zero, opacity zero. We don't need this transition in here and let's save that and test it out. So now when I click into here, you can see that it fades in the opacity and also the animation. So you get this nice little effect here. And now we can finally come over here and change that red. Let's just make this maybe uh, 333 or something. That's a little too dark. So now here's our final design. So you can see I can click on little radio buttons like so and get my little custom animation and design and it all works as expected.
because we just hid the radio buttons with opacity, they're actually still there. So it also works for accessibility and screen readers as well. So kind of a fun few little tricks there with using the before and after pseudo selectors, as well as the adjacent sibling selector and also the not checker. So all those things in conjunction can give us a fancy little custom radio button. I hope you liked, subscribe, thumbs up, share, all that good stuff, and we will see you in the next one.